everyone, welcome back to CJ Explores. We are Charlotte and Corey, and in this vlog, we are in the country of Austria, exploring its capital city, Vienna. We've lost dancing. It's a beautiful day in Vienna, and to start off our time here, we are going to go on a walking tour. If you watch other vlogs around Europe, you know that we love walking tours because we like to learn about the places we're going to. It makes it so much easier to kind of adventure around and meet tourists when you know that. But we just grabbed some food quickly on the um, train station. We have about 10 minutes to go to meet our walking tour. It's two hours long, and it's going to take us around all the beautiful sights in Vienna. Well, we started off at this memorial area to um, anti-war and fascism. I, don't, I, I hate to keep you in the sun, but just for a couple of minutes, yeah? The elderly Jewish man who is washing the streets. This place was actually a building. It was an apartment building with a massive bomb shelter underneath. There was a room for 300 people. Unfortunately, during March 1945, it was bombed. Uh, and the rubble from the building actually made it impossible for the people to get out of the bomb shelter, so they were trapped in there. Also, there are still people underground. They could only find 50% of the bodies when they cleaned the area and removed all the rubble, so it is basically now a graveyard. things that we have found on this tour is that behind me on the clock tower is a moon clock. It was built in the 17th century and it perfectly goes through the phases of the moon. So now it's around new moon, so there's like a new moon up there with stars. I just think it's so cool. I don't think I've ever seen anything like that anywhere and I would actually like one for myself. <laughs> Observations. They have found some Roman buildings, settlements, and it is just open here, like an open museum. And I had no idea this was here. Very cool. And people that we loved, all these things that. Well, that is the tour all wrapped up. That was, um, yeah, a very central tour in Vienna. Uh, we saw all the main sort of highlights. We learned what buildings were bombed and destroyed and what parts have been renovated and the churches and all the kind of historical events, I guess, around uh, the centre of Vienna. But now we are going to go back through the centre, find some food. Behind me is the main cathedral of Austria. And actually the roof is just so stunning. It's one of my favourite buildings I've seen so far. As you can see, that roof is different from the rest of the building. The original was completely made of wood. And during World War II fires from the city, you know, the wind brought flames onto the roof and kind of destroyed it. And it kind of destroyed it from the outside in. So the roof collapsed and they had to build it again. It's just so pretty. I've never seen a cathedral so unique. It's one of the highlights for me. Not a big lunch, but a brunch break. I've got an acai bowl and Corey's got a porridge acai. Interesting, very cute. For our stay in Vienna, we have decided to stay at the Student Hotel. It is a very cool hotel and we're excited to show you inside. Let's go have a look. So as you can see, the lobby in here is really exciting. It's all kind of bright and playful and inviting. There's all these things to do. You're just kind of looking constantly where to sit, what to do. But right in the center is the check-in service. It is self-check-in, but there are staff just floating around that help you. You just uh, come and ask you if you need any help, and they'll tell you all the information you'll need to know about your stay. Walking around the lobby and finding places like this, you can see how this hotel was designed for social and community interaction. This hotel is actually student accommodation and a hotel. And this is so evident when you're walking around a hotel, because you can find so many places to hang out with friends, to take your laptop to do some work with loads of sockets so it's really really good for people like us who work on the road or students of course as you can see this hotel is not like most hotels we have a slide this is the first thing you saw when we came here and i was like that is really fun so this slide connects from the ground floor where you check in down to the basement you can take a lift stairs or we recommend the slide and it leads you to this cool kind of play area. You have playstations in the back with seating, a little pool table and a table tennis table. And there's also a quiet working space just over here. 
It's pretty big in there and it's a perfect place if you're working online or you're a student because half of this hotel is student accommodation, so this is so good. Time to go check out the rooms. You can really see here that they have that student vibe running throughout the whole hotel. So even though we're not students, we're staying here as hotel guests, we don't feel like we're not supposed to be here. Like it does uh, just have this nice kind of beautiful vibe, but it also does feel like a really nice hotel room too. They've got that nice balance between the two. <laughs> this bed is so big. So breakfast here at the student hotel is a buffet style selection. There is actually quite a bit to choose from. You have your usual cooked items, and then you have your yogurt, your breads, your fruits and your milks. We are both plant-based, so we have got a dish of veggies and hash browns. Hash browns are Corey's favorite thing in the world, so he is happy. <laughs> and obviously you get all your teas, coffees and your juices. We've come down to the riverside in Vienna now, and as you can see, this place is filled with graffiti like the town is or well, the city itself is so clean but the kind of street art graffiti definitely seems to be all along the riverside there's absolutely loads of it i just realized they've used their uh, shopping trolleys as planters <laughs> that's interesting definitely keeping in the urban theme So the city of Vienna actually have an agreement with street artists. There is so much street art here, but you're not allowed to do any street art in the city. And there actually was two Banksy's that were located in different areas around the city. They have since been covered up with some nice white paint <laughs> they've, as they've renovated um, those areas. And now it's like areas with cafes and restaurants and bars. Um, but yeah, all of the street art or most of the street art seems to be just localized to along the river and it's amazing <laughs> they've even got it right down onto the river walls, uh, that, like as if they were on boats doing their spray painting and stuff. So pretty amazing, it's very colorful. Um, awesome place to go for a little ride along the bike if you want some inspiration for uh, any creative things that you're doing. Um, a lot of really cool art and it seems like there's a lot of cool like little spots along the river as well to have a drink, uh, take in the summer sunshine or watch the sunset. They're called style writers, not street artists. I've never heard of the term style writers. We have stumbled across this huge boat which was just on the river. That is so cool. There is an actual swimming pool. Uh, it's on the lower floor and there's like chain rooms and toilets, everything's on board. It's a huge boat and it's just here as a venue on the river. And there's multiple bars, loads of places to hang out. So we are just having a nosy. Might stop and get a drink and uh, Maybe something to eat. Ooh, ooh, thank you, darling. What a cool place. I am absolutely gutted that we don't have our swimmers with us because if we did, I think we would be in that pool, wouldn't we? Yeah, it's definitely warm enough. It's such a cool place. We had no idea, and I think that's why we just like to go off exploring and not, you know, research a little bit, but not completely because then you have surprises like this, which is just a unique experience to do in Vienna. That is so cool. I am. Um, really regretting. I don't even know why I didn't think it's being swimmers there when you're just walking around the city. But it's quite a big pool actually. Very cool. It's only €6.50 for entry and that's like a day pass. So you can go for a swim, go back to the city, get some lunch and then it's open until 10 o'clock at night. What a spot. We've come to Statue Park and it's just a nice public park here. People are just relaxing, taking in the nice day, the nice weather. Well, this is so nice. Everyone is literally just chilling in the park, reading books, using all the benches. It's just, it's really nice to see. Like the people of Vienna seem so chilled. <laughs> Apparently they're managed by a private company. I think they said they're from Czech, the horses. Not something that we would really promote. I still think it's horses just working all day. They said that they stop if it's between, if it goes further than minus four, or if it goes hotter than, I think 35 degrees. Still, I wouldn't want to be walking around the city in 30 degrees, to be honest. It was 28 today and it was hot in that sun. So I think 34 degrees would still be too hot. And yeah, I think that's something that's slowly fading out of tourism.
So this platform behind me is very famous historically because up there is where Hitler stood in the very early days of World War II. He announced here to the crowds that were all standing here looking at him that Germany and Austria would be uniting. Now some people thought this meant jobs and some people realised this meant war. Unfortunately, people now call Vienna the first victim of Hitler. We have come to district number seven now. This is where our tour guide said we'll find lots of cool cafes, um, bars and restaurants and kind of like sitting outside, very European style. So we're just taking a little wander through as we look for somewhere to eat. Charlotte is actually close to death, so. <laughs> I'm so hungry. We have to be careful. But yeah, it's a cool little neighborhood. Lots of green, um, it's beautiful like afternoon sunshine, so. We're just enjoying it because tomorrow is going to be a little bit cloudy, so I think it's going to be a museum day. I was really just craving fresh food and kind of fresh veggies after kind of eating like apple strudels and stuff and pastries lately. And we found a Vietnamese place which obviously always super yummy and fresh. So we've ordered a few dishes, we've got some more to come. One number one. I think we're just tucking in. Well, that was a very, very nice dinner. This neighborhood here, district number seven. It uh, feels like a very family-friendly neighbourhood. Like, it's very safe. There's a lot of kids and parents going about having their dinner and stuff, so um, it seems like a cool place to hang out, and I think that's why the tour guide recommended us to come and check it out. Now, you, to tell that you are in this neighbourhood, um, it's pretty easy. All you need to do is look up at the street signs, and they'll have a number next to the name of the street. Number seven is the one you're looking for. When you're in the middle of the city, it's number one. Um, and there are 23 districts in total in Vienna. So we could get home very quickly using the subway, but we've decided to take the tram because it's a beautiful sunset tonight, so we're gonna enjoy it. We've got a 24-hour pass, which means you can take the subway, bus, and tram, um, but we are gonna enjoy the sights of the rest of Vienna by the tramways. and she said check out the Cafe Alderhof. It is really cute and completely agree. We loved it there. There was like this really nice, um, kind of like colonial vibe inside. It's a really pretty cafe. The perfect place if you just want like a nice coffee and cake, we recommend it. Cafe Adlerhof, not Alderhof. <laughs> but it was beautiful, yeah, really nice. Good food and uh, nice coffee, so tick. Underneath the student hotel, they have a garage, laundry, um, a games room, and they also have bike storage. So we've got a key, and we're going to go for a bike ride. So I'm just cruising through Prata. It's a massive park here near the student hotel in Vienna, and it's really nice here. There's a lot of people out and about just enjoying. It's actually such a beautiful time of year to be in Vienna. It is the 1st of September, uh, so summer has officially ended. And it's just such a lovely temperature. It's like mid-20s, nice sunshine, nice breeze. It's just perfect. Like, I'm not getting too hot on this bike ride. Nice shaded trees. A beautiful time of year to be here. Still a lot of green around, but there's also a few, few bits of brown and orange just colouring the scene as well. Lots to do here in Prata, heaps. If you're looking for a um, nice nature-based day out in Vienna, this is in the second district. Um, so it's not too far from the city and there are heaps of cafes and restaurants along here as well so you don't even have to pack a picnic, you can just come um, completely unequipped for a nice day in the park. It has like a full range of 
Asian inspired dishes, but also some vegan ones too. We tried a vegan um, duck dish. Ah, thank you. Oh, yeah. We tried a vegan duck dish over there takeaway, and it was nice. So we came back. I've gone for a green curry, and Corey's gone for a pak choy. Pak choy. Thank you so much for watching our vlog in Vienna. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. You can also support us further by clicking the join button and you become a member. Thanks again and we'll see you in the next one.